feature that we've heard from developers that they want access to in the browser is the camera. Here, for example, is the Buzz uh, web application. We'd love to not only post a Buzz, but we'd love to be able to include a picture. Well, how do you access the camera from the web browser? Well, in this development build, we've built those APIs right into the browser such that Matt now can simply uh, select if he wants to. Um, it looks like, in this case, this demo is not going to work. We'll give it one shot and we'll move on if this doesn't work. But you can access that camera capability right from within the browser. And we'll show you that in the sandbox later. It's great. <laughs> Let's talk about another capability that's available. Um, but before we talk about that capability, let me remind you of what's possible in Android. Google, starting about uh, several years ago, really made a deep investment in voice recognition. You know, we recognized that the mobile device, because of its limited input capability, uh, would be the platform in which people used voice input more than any other platform. In fact, we see a stunning number of queries being done on mobile devices where the input is a human voice. Now, just as a reminder of how fantastic our capability has become over the past two years, let me do a few demos. Or more accurately, Matt, why don't you highlight a few cases? Pictures of Barack Obama with the French president at the G8 summit. That's a tough one. Boom. Look at that. Because this is so fun, let's do a few more. Pictures of the Golden Gate Bridge at sunset. These are queries you're likely not to type in, let alone get a response back in a, a few seconds. Isn't that great? And one more. Delgado Vineyards, Napa. My favorite vineyard in Napa. Boom. Now, what Matt, when Matt just showed you was phenomenal voice recognition that we're now shipping uh, in uh, uh, Mandarin, uh, Japanese, uh, English, a number of languages, and that's constantly increasing. Um, but what's coming next is also the ability to understand human intentions. We'll give you a very simple sneak peek at the kinds of things that we're going to enable. Call fifth floor restaurant. So in this case, because he said call, it got it triggered. And there's many, many more intentions we're going to go build in and make it very, very simple for you to use uh, uh, voice input as a first class way to, uh, to interact with your Android device. Hey, Vic, let's give this one a try. Oh, you got it? OK, let's, let's go back to the camera. Let's see if this thing works. So this is a web app. It's a Buzz web app. There's the camera from the browser, boom, right into the camera. Isn't that great? And now we can post a picture and give web developers the same type of capabilities that you'd expect in a native application. I'm glad that worked. No need for you guys to visit the sandbox. <laughs> All right. All right. Now, back, getting back to the speech uh, demonstration, um, what we showed you was capability that we make available to developers. But what about accessing that capability from the browser? Here's a web app. It is a translate app from Google with one new uh, feature. You'll note the microphone right there at the top. Matt, if you could just point to the microphone and watch what Matt does. Can you help me find the nearest hospital? Awesome. Awesome. All right, let's go back to slides. Now, we're not only committed to making sure that Android. You can clap. I'll let you clap. You know, I love it when I don't even have to speak to a slide and we just get applause. I'm so tempted to go on. But l l let, me, let me just make a point here. You know, we're not only committed to having the world's fastest browser, we're committed to having the world's most comprehensive browser. It turns out that on the internet, people use Splash. <laughs> and part of being open means you're inclusive rather than exclusive and you're open to innovation. Um, you know, this was driven home to me very powerfully when my daughter uh, picked up my iPad and went to her favorite website, uh, website Nickelodeon. And this is what she saw on the iPad. 
Can we switch to the iPad? A sea of orange. <laughs> she said, Daddy, can I play with your Android device? And this is what she saw. The full Nickelodeon site. Isn't that great? That's what openness means. And by the way, a special thanks to Adobe. Uh, for their incredible willingness to work with us, engage with us on Android and in Chrome and in many other areas. It's really fun to work with other folks in the ecosystem uh, to meet the needs of users. Much nicer than just saying no. Yeah. All right, let's go back to slides. Now, we've also made significant improvements in the Android marketplace. Uh, we've listened carefully to the feedback that we've gotten from uh, developers and from users, and I think you're going to like the enhancements. Let's talk about what we've done. On average, our data shows that users are installing more than 40 apps on their Android device. And so finding those apps is a challenge. Also, they want to search within the data of those apps. They want to move those apps to the SD card, and they want to update all uh, without having to update each individual app uh, by themselves. Let me show you through a series of demos what we've done here. Let's go to demos. The first demonstration we're going to show you is just searching the apps. And now, with the quick search box, we've made it trivially easy to scope it to apps. So as soon as you start typing a letter, why the app you're looking for just comes up. It's a simple and easy way to go find apps. Not only can you find apps, but we've improved the quick search box so that uh, developers can plug into the search framework. In this case, that icon is for Mint. Mint is a financial application. And now you're searching within the data of that application, bringing up uh, your financial records. We think developers are going to extend this in all sorts of exciting ways, making not only Android more usable, but their own applications be surface, discoverable, uh, and more fun and engaging for the user. Another issue we've heard is people want to take advantage of the openness of Android, the ability for you to plug in an SD card, uh, with arbitrary amounts of memory. And they want to move apps not just in the internal memory, but off to the SD card. Two points. We've enabled that uh, capability in a secure way with Froyo. But we've also made it so that the user never has to worry about it. When they install an application, we'll intelligently look at the space and, if appropriate, move it to the SD card. If the user wants to get involved and manually move things around, that's what this demonstration shows. In this case, Matt is going to take a brand new game, Need for Speed, and he's going to shift that game from the internal memory onto the SD card. Um, and there you go. There, the, the, the whole app, 50 megabytes, is being moved over. Why don't we just start the game? Just so we can, so you can see it's on the SD card. Why don't you launch that game? Isn't that awesome? Great new game, Need for Speed, that's coming, and it can live on your SD card. OK, let's move on. <laughs> Matt, Matt, we, we got to go. I know the game's fun. All right, let's go into the marketplace and talk about. <laughs> all right, let's, let's talk about update all functionality. Matt, that's you. He's easily distracted. All right. Today, you have to update each application individually. In Froyo, we've made it simple. At the bottom of the Android Marketplace, you see the Update All button. I'm kind of embarrassed you have to clap on that. We're glad it's there. Um, we've gone one step further with Froyo. Why should the user have to take any action? Starting with Froyo, with the user's permission, you can allow automatic updating, and all your apps are updated all the time. Isn't that great? And the user doesn't have to worry about this at all. Let's go back to slides. Another key feature we're adding in Froyo is designed to meet the needs of developers. We want the best apps on Android, the highest quality apps. And that means we need to close the loop when there's a problem. 